Philadelphia 76ers came within a bounce away of going into overtime against the Toronto Raptors last year in the Eastern Conference Finals. And who knows, if they got into overtime, they may have been able to somehow get themselves into the Eastern Conference Finals that year. The entire history of the NBA would have been rewritten. The Golden State Warriors may have been fully healthy this year. Hell, maybe Kevin Durant would, would have still been a warrior, although I think that's a bit of a stretch. But that's not what happened. Kawhi Leonard made this crazy buzzer beater shot and Joel Embiid was heartbroken and he was crying and it was the first time we really saw Joel Embiid vulnerable on national television. A guy that's typically a maestro of manipulating the media who has one of the most interesting social media profiles in all of the NBA, if not the most, was crying on national TV. He didn't care that he may have became a meme. Seen the Jordan memes before. He didn't care because he had a chance to potentially go to the NBA Finals, to the Eastern Conference Finals, to finally get himself some hardware and he lost it and I'm sure that offseason he's thought of it I'm sure he would thought of the fact that the Golden State Warriors got injured in the finals that on paper the Sixers on paper were better than the Toronto Raptors and if you ask me the team of Jimmy Butler Tobias Harris JJ Redick Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid was significantly better than the Kawhi Leonard led Toronto Raptors now I know that might be bold but I'm talking about on paper there's a reason why the the series ended the way it did and the Toronto Raptors won the NBA Finals. I'm not taking anything away from them, but I am telling you, I wouldn't be shocked if Joel Embiid actually had that thought pop into his head that offseason. And I'm sure that should have motivated him, but it didn't. As I cut to this message to our sponsor, I want you guys to take a moment to comment down below where you think the Philadelphia 76ers are going to finish this season and where you thought they were going to finish this season. Do you think they're going to finish first in the East and enter the NBA Finals? Do you think they're going to be a first round playoff exit? Let me know in the comment section down below because this video is brought to you by... It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. The Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0 kit is officially out right in time for your Christmas and holiday shopping needs. Man, this is the perfect gift for you to get your yourself that your girlfriend will be thankful for because if you trim your tree your package will look even bigger and right now with manscapes peak hygiene plan included in your purchase you get the biggest bang for your buck as a subscriber you'll get 25 percent savings on your order instantly a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months this makes sure that you guys have the most hygienic shave possible every time exclusive access to the new plow 2.0 safety razor with upgrade ergonomic design which isn't even available for purchase on the website yet and for a limited time subscribers get two free gifts the shed travel bag which by the way is freaking awesome and limited edition high performance boxer briefs on top of that guys i'll tell you my favorite feature of the lawnmower 2.0 it's the fact that it's waterproof you could manscape in the shower without having to worry about electrocuting yourself i do this in my gym locker room all the time don't tell my gym that I do that. So use promo code FLIGHTMIKE for 20% off of your purchase and start manscaping this holiday season. Now, before we get started, guys, if you see a lot of my content recommended to you, but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to go full time on YouTube when I hit 500,000 okay. subscribers. On top of that, a lot of my content has been getting claimed. So in the event something bad is going to happen to my YouTube channel, I am going to move over all my content to Instagram TV link to that's in the description down below i also made a discord chat for you guys to like suggest video ideas to me and for us to talk about basketball during the games and finally i made a new channel just for football content called microphone i'm gonna leave a link to that in the description down below last night the philadelphia 76ers took on the denver nuggets and of course they played a very good game they beat the denver nuggets who are currently the fifth team in the western conference now really quickly i got to tell you guys something the western conference is no longer the stronger conference out of the two as a matter of fact i'm going to show you both conferences here you can see the eastern conference is significantly stronger and but of course the first place teams in both conferences have the same record but if you look the west the rest of the way down without a doubt the eastern conference is stronger there's one less team with a losing record in the playoff race there's two teams 
teams in the Western Conference with a losing record that are currently in contention for the playoffs. That's something you usually see in the East. So of course, we can no longer just dub the 76ers because of this great core of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid as the team to beat in the Eastern Conference, especially because I feel as if the team has regressed this year. They've lost their go-to scorer in the final moments of, their ga of the game. And as a matter of fact, that go-to score that they traded for in the middle of the season last year went to a team that was supposed to be weak this year and made that team even stronger than the 76ers arguably which resulted in some fairly choice words during the halftime of the game that the Denver Nuggets played the Philadelphia 76ers two NBA legends commented on Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons yeah. Joel, Joel Embiid now Giannis on a whole nother level right now let's just take him out there please but Joel Embiid, LeBron, Anthony Davis, James Harden, those guys that we've sent, oh, they're the best player, they're in the conversation. Like, Giannis is the MVP favorite. Then you got Anthony Davis, LeBron right there, Luka's right there. Like, we talk more about Luka than Embiid. And Embiid is, in my opinion, he could be, he's the toughest player in the league to match up with, but we don't talk about him the way we talk about Luca, Giannis, Anthony Davis, LeBron, James. We don't ever say that about him. And it's frustrating for me because I picked the Sixers to get to the finals. And how are you feeling about that dick uh, right now? He ain't got no chance. And Chuck is no stranger in saying something bold. He's the toughest player in the league to match up with. But we don't talk about him the way we talk about Luka, Giannis, Anthony Davis, or James Harden. We don't ever say that about him. And it's frustrating for me because I picked the Sixers to get to the finals. Barkley would continue to say that the Philadelphia 76ers, who are currently on a three-game win streak and are 13-0 at home, by the way, have no chance to make it to the finals. And I don't think he means this as an insult to the way the Sixers are playing. It's just, if you have to pick between Giannis and Embiid and Simmons in a... NBA playoff series, chances are you're going to go with Giannis. If you have to choose between the Raptors and the Sixers once again, you may give the you may give the edge to the Toronto Raptors, despite them not having Kawhi Leonard this year and no matter how close they were last year. If we're going to point to the common reasons why people are criticizing Embiid this year. And the first thing is you guys have to remember how Joel Embiid came into the league after being viewed as this injury prone center. He finally took the league by storm and he he literally looked like the modern day version of Hakeem Olajuwon and I'm not joking his game is very similar to that and he really hit his peak last year he put up near MVP numbers with 27.5 points per game shooting 48% from the field grabbing 14 rebounds per game and across the board all of his numbers have regressed this year and for the life of us we cannot figure out why because now that jimmy butler is gone you would think that he would take a bigger role in the offense now he's averaging 22 points per game his field goal percentage is down to a 45 percent across the board Embiid has regressed this year as a player and the thing that bothers us the most is the fact that after he expressed so much emotion on national TV, after he cried after seeing a chance to win an NBA championship ripped out of his hands, we thought that may have been the death of the Joel Embiid that was just clowning around in the middle of games, joking around on social media, and this is the time that we're gonna see the real Joel Embiid. Now, a lot of you guys might be saying, Mike, what is wrong with a guy that likes to play around, that likes to mess around, that likes to take, uh, that likes to make jokes, and that's as funny as Joel Embiid? It's just personality, and personality is a good thing. Well, I'm going to compare Joel Embiid to two centers that dominated previous eras of the NBA. The first center we're going to compare him to is Shaquille O'Neal, who, without a doubt, dominated the '90s and the early part of the 2000s. And the next player we're going to com uh, compare him to is Dwight Howard, and we're gonna get to what Shaq had to say about Joel Embiid in just a second because one thing you need to understand about Shaq is he did have that fun loving personality he would rap he would act in terrible movies and without a doubt Shaq was one of the uh, first players in the NBA where you were like wow this guy has a ton of personality but the thing about Shaq is even if he was a guy that likes to mess and joke around he would mess around off of the court and dominate on the court Shaq was 
absolutely obsessed with imposing his will upon his opponents and you didn't really see you did see a little bit of his personality come out in the beginning of the year uh in the beginning of his career but it really didn't come out fully like full-fledged Shaq the personality the Shaq this the big Aristotle all those freaking nicknames that he got for himself that didn't really come out until he began winning began winning MVPs and he began winning championships and of course Shaq wasn't all good it got to a point where eventually he he came into the season out of shape he got into it with Kobe Bryant apparently because of this reason and eventually he would get traded win one more championship with the Miami Heat and then his career would kind of go downhill from there but it was a fantastic career he's one of the greatest centers of all time top five without a doubt now if you were to compare that to Dwight Howard Dwight Howard started making jokes and playing around and showing off his personality within the second year of his career we saw him doing these little dance competitions with Shaq at the all-star game and that's the all-star game so you're allowed to do that but he began doing this whole superman thing during all-star weekend he would just joke around with the media even when he was getting his head coach fired he would still joke around with the media and as a matter of fact his personality got so annoying with how little it seemed that he cared about the game to the point where his teammates just couldn't stand him on the Atlanta Hawks and on the Charlotte Hornets and he would bounce from team to team after team until the Lakers literally said yo Dwight we're gonna sign you again but if your personality becomes a little bit too much for us your contract is going to be null and void and he's still to this day not signed to a guaranteed contract so speaking of Shaq Shaq actually gave his opinion on Joel Embiid and I actually have to agree with Shaq a little bit more Shaq says if you want people to remember the process forever you've got to step up Shaq says it's like all these other people who do sports shows that's criticism we're not criticizing we're telling you that you could be great you ain't playing hard enough 22 isn't good enough to get you to the next level do you want to be great or do you want to be good if you want to be good keep giving us 22 points but if you want to be great give me 28 give me 30. Shaq is right Shaq is a hundred percent right he is not Joel Embiid could be on the level of Giannis Joel Embiid could be significantly better than what he is and he could be the face of the NBA if he wanted to he has the personality to do so but there's another problem that a lot of us are not talking about and that's whether the fit of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid will work together in today's NBA Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid literally thrive in opposite offenses Joel Embiid needs his back to the basket and he needs to be surrounded by shooters he needs a system very similar to what the San Antonio Spurs run and in his ideal scenario he gets traded to the San Antonio Spurs because I feel like that is where he will without a doubt become a champion if he has Greg Popovich building around him whereas Ben Simmons thrives in the modern NBA he needs to be surrounded by shooters as well but he loves to push the pace and he is playing his best basketball when he is running transition off and that is the biggest struggle that the Sixers currently have they have these two amazing players in Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid without a doubt all-stars but also who may be better off without each other on the same team and that could be the thing that's holding the Sixers back now let me know in the comments section down below because that could be a little bit much when you have a player of Embiid's caliber and you have a player of Simmons's caliber you would think that they could coexist together and play phenomenal basketball with each other but there are a lot of times where two players are on the same team and they're fantastic players and just due to the scheme of things and due to the way the offensive system is run they are just not meant to play on the same team as each other or we could go a step further and say they just don't have the right coach to put them in the proper scheme to get the best out of their players so we could even point the finger to Brett Brown. Now again, the Sixers are doing fine. They're on a three game win streak at the time of this video. They haven't lost a game at home, but I just think down the line, if they have to match up with a team like the Celtics or the Bucks in the playoffs, I just don't see them winning. If they couldn't win it last year when Joel Embiid was averaging 27 points per game and they had Jimmy Butler on the team and Tobias Harris and JJ Redick, what makes you think that they're going to be able to win it this year when Joel Embiid has taken a step back and they lost JJ Redick and they lost Jimmy Butler? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section.